in the last lecture we have learnt how to design the fundamental circuits means uh, the common digital elements like decoder the multiplexer one half adder the full adder now today we will see how the large complex combinational circuits can be designed using these fundamental circuits means this half adder full adder decoder multiplexer or even it can be some smaller modules now the basic concept behind this large combination circuit design is the design reuse now what do we mean by de design reuse as digital systems are becoming large and large and obviously they are becoming complex due to different type of applications particularly the communication applications now it becomes almost impossible to design the whole system from scratch means the design fundamentals we have read starting from the truth table or the boolean equations then the reducing that thing it is almost impossible now we are very fortunate that studying this behavior of this small large circuits what we have observed that this large expression which represents the behavior of the complex circuits that also can be realized by a combination of smaller expressions which are already designed now larger design can reuse the smaller predesigned module means that one large equations as if that are partitioned into a smaller set a number of smaller equations now these equations can be realized by the rule we have read or the design rules we have already learned so there are already some some modules are already designed these modules we are telling as as if these are some fundamental circuits that already we have learned now using these modules these are the predesigned modules that means we can now design a big circuitry now for these large complex designs as if the components are not the gate not the and or nand this type of gates rather they are replaced by half adders full adders marks decoder decoders these we are calling as if the reusing of the circuits or the fundamental circuits or the digital common digital elements now what will be the rules for this complex design already we know that the simpler design how we can develop now use fundamental circuits called the basic building blocks as if these are these will be treated as the basic gates so the basic gates are now replaced by basic building blocks for this building blocks are there the already what we have read that our half adder our full adder the decoder the encoder and particularly the marks and they can be any other smaller modules now this reuse basic building blocks to design new circuits so as if this smaller circuits or what we have defined that basic building blocks they are pre designed pre verified that they are working correctly they are realizing the small expressions or the equations correctly and then we can use these building blocks to design the complex circuits now use a hierarchy that means here we can we can use or the concept of hierarchical design one of 
of such hierarchical design last day we have seen when a larger mux multiplexer we have designed from the one smaller multiplexers we call that this is a multiplexer tree already we have read that thing. Now, as the circuits are large or the systems of, um, are becoming complex now almost it is impossible to do this design or to develop the system manually. Now, for th these purposes we use the CAT tools the computer aided design tools. Now, first we take one very simple example that one 9 input watt parity generator. Now, design a circuit with 9 inputs and 1 output. What we are, how we are defining the parity generator? If number of 1s in input is odd, then we call this is a odd parity or the then output is 1. And if the number of 1s are even, then the output will be 0 and then it will be called the even parity. So, we are defining the parity as if the, the total number of depending on the total number of 1s in its input and accordingly the output will be defined. So, if I take one 9 variable function say f and see here if we give a b c d e f g h i these are the 9 variables then h and i are 1 1 means there are 2 inputs which are true means 1. So, if it is this equal to if it is even then the output will be 0. Now, if the number of inputs are 1 see here a c e there are only 3 inputs which are true that means, here yes, if it is a c and e these are 3 inputs. So, these are odd number of inputs are 1. So, the output will be 1 these we are defining as a odd parity. Now, what about the truth table? It has as it is a 9 variable function. So, it has 2 to the power 9 equal to 5 12 such rows and 50 percent of these will have an odd number of 1s. So, 256 mean terms there will be 256 mean terms means if again if we explain see there are we have taken a function f f of 9 variables a b c d e f g h i. Now, if I draw the truth table then these 9 variables they will be 0 0 0 2 all 1 all possible combinations I have to take all possible combinations I have to take. Now, if I if we see that here this will be it will be 5 12 2 to the power 9 equal to 5 12 combinations. Now, these 5 12 combinations there will be 256 such cases where means the half of the cases 256 means actually 2 to the power 9 by 2 half of the cases it will be odd input odd means output is 1 as we have defined the parity odd and it will be even parity it will be even parity output is 
0. So, if I now I draw the Carnot map, then in the map it is a 9 variable function map. So, there the number of mean terms for the odd parity will be 256 because we will be getting 256 1 and so 256 mean terms will exist. Now, it turns out that all mean terms are prime. Now, conclusion is that 9 into 256 is 2304 that number of literals will be will exist. Now, again if we remember our XOS, we see that what was our XOR function. See our 2 input XOR function was or the 2 if we write the truth table of XOR. this is a 2 input XOR say a b output is O. Then if it is 0 0 output is 0, if it is 0 1 output is 1, 1 0 output is 1, 1 1 output is 0. See that these two cases where the inputs are even then output becomes output is 0. But here these two cases see the number of inputs are odd only one inputs are odd. So, output equal to 1. So, a 2 input XOR can be treated as a 2 variable odd parity function. This can be treated as a odd parity generator. for 2 inputs or 2 variables. Now, if we observe the 3 input XOS, what we will be seeing that if we change if it is 3 input XOR, then if we take the all the combinations say output is Z, then it will be Zero, then one zero zero. If I take, it will be one one zero one. It will be zero one one zero. It will be zero one one one. It will be one one. We have missed that is zero one zero two. There also it will be one. Now see there are here there are two to the power. 3 there are 8 combinations 2 to the power 3 equal to 8 combinations from there that there are 4 cases means the inputs are when the inputs are even then output equal to 0 and there are 4 cases then it is giving the output odd or the that means, if inputs are odd means total number of 1s in the input combinations are 1 then output equal to 1 which is our definition of the odd parity generator. So, one 3 input XOR that is a 3 variable odd parity generator. 
So, already we have read that this is nothing but a that mean terms where the, if we draw the Carnot uh, map that 1, 2, 4, 7 this 4 uh, mean terms will exist. Now, such functions are special they are called the odd functions because they are generating as just now we have discussed they are generating that uh, the output 1 for input combinations odd means odd weight means the number of ones in the input combinations are odd. Now, if we see the Carnot map, if we draw that it is a three variable function x, y, z, we draw this is x and this is our y, z, then this will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, this is 1, 1, 1, 0. See here for these two terms z is true and this two term y is true. Here x is true means x equal to 1, here it is 0. Now, see this mean term, this mean term is nothing but x y bar z bar this is my the first mean term this is the x bar y bar z this is my second mean term this is x y z the my third mean term and this is x bar y z bar my fourth mean term. So, this realizes our x or functions now this is the parity generator that p equal to x x or y x or z. Now, what will be the parity checker? The parity checker will be that if with the parity generator if I compute the x or functions and we see that if it is equal to 0 or or equal to 1 that means, if it is same parity then it will be giving 0 it will be a different parity then it will be giving 1. So, this same circuit or the XOR circuit can be used as a parity generator as well as that can be used as a parity checker. Now, if we see that circuit that for the 9 input parity generator circuit. So, as already we have seen that it is a um, for the 3 variable it is a 3 input XORs. So, if it is a 9 input parity generator, so it will be a 9 input XOR functions. So, if I draw the circuits, see there are X0 to X8, these are my input variables, these are my inputs. So, these are 9 variables and everywhere I am using a 2 input XOS. See here, here this is designing a 4 variable XOS. So, if we partition the circuit, this is a 4 variable. and the lower portion this is a 5 variable. So, this is a 4 variable and this is a 5 variable and then again another 2 input XOR has been used which is producing the output z or the odd parity this is my 
it is generating my odd parity. Now, see we have taken this 9 variable as if this is a 3 variable XOR functions. So, if we redesign that thing, see if we redesign see here this is a this is a logic diagram for the 3 variable odd parity. A 0, A 1, A 2 are the 3 inputs and B are the output. So, if now these we have just redraw that thing as if this is my this is one fundamental circuits I am defining or this is one module. This module have 3 inputs A 0, A 1, A 2 and one output say B. Now, for to design a larger circuitry or to design a larger variable parity generator, I can reuse this module as a basic building block. So, this is my basic building block for designing the larger variable parity generator. So, this is my basic building block. Now, in the this second figure we have redrawn these circuits using this thing. So, if we say this is my basic building block, block 1, my block 2, this is my block 3 and another 3 input building block we have used the output is the parity generator and these inputs are the 9 inputs of the parity generator which I want to compute the parity. So, this is the simple concept of the design reuse that means one three input XOS or that three variable parity generator first I have designed and then using this smaller modules as if this is my basic building block again I am designing the larger variable parity generator. Now, this concept we want to utilize further. Again another design example we have taken that is very uh, common as well as very important in real life uh, design that is called the multiplier design. Now, before we start the multiplier design again we recapitulate quickly the our half adder and full adder circuits. We remember that our half adder circuits are that there are two operands and we neglect the carry input and sum is defined as the A x or B and the carry generated will be the end of A and B. So, C equal to A B and C equal to A x or B. Now, these we can this, this can be treated as a half adder module. So, this is my half adder module or basic building block whose inputs are two inputs only A and B and there are two outputs the sum and the carry. Now, 
we want to utilize or use this basic building block of half adder for larger designs. See how it works. Now, consider one uh, 2 bit multiplier. Okay. See that we want 2 bit multiplier. and the two operands are A and B. So, this is A is A 0 A 1, B is B 0 B 1. Now, we are multiplying these two. So, from our simple uh, multiplier rule, we will multiply in this way, this will be A 0 B 0 it will be ended, then it is added with or the next term will be better we first we compute the terms, this will be a 0 b 0, second term will be a 0, a 0 b 1, then it will be shifted left in one place. 1 bit shift and the next term will be a 1 b 0 and then a 1 b 1. Now, we take the sum of the terms. So, the first term will be a 0 b 0 means our s 0 is a 0 b 0, s 1 will be a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0, s 2 is as it is a 1 b 1 and as there is no carry for this particular multiplication. So, S 3 is 0. So, we can write now that the terms or expression for S 0, S 1, S 2, S 3. So, as already we have defined S 0 is S 0 B 0, S 1 is the least significant bit of add A 0 B 1, A 1 B 0. See that this is the two terms this is one summation S 1 is the or S 1 is the A 0 B 1 sum of A 1 B 0. So, the sum of the two terms will be actually S 1. Then what will be my S 2? S 2 is the second bit of a 0 B 1 plus A 1 B 1 and A 1 B 0. See the, this is that that S, S 2, S 2 means my the sum of the third term and the carry carry ohm of the second term. So, that is written here and for this case there is no S 3, but for some multiplication S 3 can be there. So, if we now see that what will be our S 0, see our S 0 is simple A 0 B 0. So, A 0 B 0 means one simple AND gate. So, this is my AND gate and see that A 0 comes this is my A 0 A 0 is 1 input and B 0 is B 0 is 1 input. So, this is A 0 B 0 is S 0. So, A 0 B 0 is S 0. What is my S 1? S 1 is the two terms will be added and the sum of that. See first we have to add A 0 B 1. So, this is the AND gate which is whose inputs are A 0 and B 1 
and the output is fed to a half adder. Now, this is one half adder we need half adder module whose two inputs are one is a 0 b 1 other is a 1 b 0. So, this is another a 1 b 0. So, this is a 1 b 0 is the output of one AND gate whose inputs are a 1 and b 0 b 0 itself. So, this is one half adder module. Now, another half adder I need whose that the carry of the previous half adder the carry of the second terms that is one input and other one is the a 1 b 1. So, a 1 b 1 is coming from a two input and get whose inputs are obviously a 1 and b 1. and the this is sum is S 2 and if there is one carry the, that is my S 3. So, the product is S 0, S 1, S 2, S 3 we are getting from here. Now, see here there are 4 AND gates, 4 2 input AND gates we need 4 2 input AND gates and 2 half adder. So, these half adders are used as the basic building blocks for a 2 bit multiplier. Now, we see a larger multiplier and see whether the half adder is will be sufficient or we need some other basic building block. See here if we multiply multiply the 3 bit that means a 0 a 1 a 2 to b 0 b 1 b 2 then actually b 0 b 1 b 2 we can write as if these are the combination of 3. So, 0 0 b 0, 0 b 1 0, b 2 0 0 because these are the LSB, LSB is b 0, the second bit is b 1 and the MSB is b 2. So, as if we can uh, partition or we can break the b 2 b 1 b 0 as the 3 different combinations and then if we add it will be b 2 b 1 b 0. Just if we take an example, say if it is 1011, then see our uh, I can I can break that 1000, 0010, 0010, 0001. So, 0001 means this is decimal 1, 10 one means 2, this is 8. So, 821, this is actually if we uh, this will be 11 or 1011, that is also my 11 in decimal. So, these two are same. Now, this concept is being utilized in the, the larger multipliers. Now, before again uh, we see that larger design of the multiplier, again we recapitulate the full adder circuit. Now, the full adder as we remember here the two with the two operands another operand is there which is a carry in because that as it is a uh, set again a two bit adder if we consider previous bit carry is also considered because it is doing that sum. So, 
S is x or B x or C, C is A B plus B C plus C A. Again we can design this thing as if this is a this is a full adder module whose inputs are 3 A B C and outputs are sum and carrying out. So, now this full adder can be utilized as the basic building block of the complex circuits. Now, we take a uh, 4 bit multiplier say some b b 3 b 3 b 2 b 1 b 0 and the multiplier is a 3 bit multiplier say a 0 a 1 a 2. So, we are taking a multiplier that b into a where b is b 3 b 2 b 1 b 0 4 bit whereas, a is 3 bit a 3 a, a 2 a 1 a 0. Now, if we multiply see that the similar way that we have already um, we have done that multiplication if we see ok if we just if we take that example that multiplier say what we want b 3 b 2 b 1 b 0 and we want a 2 a 1 a 0 to be multiplied with this. Again there will be some terms it is a 0 b 0 then this term will be a 0 b 1 then a 0 b 2 then a 0 b 3. Now, when will it will be multiplied by a 1 it will be shifted by 1 plus. So, it will be a 1 b 0 a 1 b 1 a 1 b 2 a 1 b 3 again it will be shifted when it will be multiplied by a 2 a 2 b 0 a 2 b 1 a 2 b 2 and a 2 b 3. Now, we have to add the whole thing. So, a 0 b 0 will be as it is so, this will be this thing. Now, these two terms they will be added as a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0. See there will be no for the second term there will be no carry. Now, for the third term C for the third term it will be a 0 b 2 plus a 1 b 1 plus a 2 b 0 plus the carry or coming from the second term from the second term. Similar thing will happen when we will consider the fourth sum this will be a 0 b 3 plus a 1 b 2 plus a 2 b 1 plus the carry coming from the third term. So, we can just as if this is the carry coming from here, here the carry coming from here, 
Similarly, here the carry coming from here and the sum and here the carry coming from here and the sum. So, this way we can we can write the thing as it these are the these are my sums. So, now the, we have to develop a circuit for which will be doing this AND means multiplication as well as the term multiplication as well as the sum of the terms. Now, see this is my a 0, a 1, a 2 are the 3 inputs the multiplier and these are the the b inputs the multiplicate. So, this is my this is my b multiplicate the 4 bits. Now, the see that okay. that this output of this AND gate this is A 1 bit B 3. So, output of this AND gate is A 1 B 3. Similarly, this will be a 1 b 2, this is a 1 b 1, this is my a 1 b 0. Now, this term is a 0 b 1, a 0 b 2, a 0 b 3 and a 0 another AND gate is there which is simply computing a 0 b 0 my first term. We remember the the first term is this was my first term that a 0 b 0 it will be as it is. So, this is my a 0 b 0 term that it will be as it is giving the output of the or the LSP of the output. So, this is my O 0. Now, what was the O 1? See, 1 was A 0 B 1, A 1 B 0. You see, see, so O 1 is coming that where that one input is a 0 b 1. So, this is my a 0 b 1 and this is my a 1 b 0. So, the it, it is a 4 bit full adder whose the 2 LSBs are added and there is no carry in the carry in is 0. So, it is simply giving that a 0 b 1 plus a 1 b 0. So, this is my the second output bit O 1. Now, the see now as it is a full adder that means that carry of this sum it is propagated to the second bit. So, now there is one there is one carry say C 1. Now, if we see the second term see here the a 0 b 2, a 1 b 1, a 2 b 0 all are added with the with the carry from the second term carry from the second term and these are a 0 b 2, a 1 b 1. See these are a 0 b 2 the second term and this is the a 1 b 1. So, a 0 b 2 and a 1 b 1. 
see this is my a 0 b 2 a 1 b 1 plus my carry. Now, these are added another term is there. What was the another term that is my see still this value is left a 2 b 0. So, I have to add a 2 b 0 also. So, this is what is my a 2 b 0 because this is one term and see the LSP of the this is a add 4 bit adder the another is this is my a 2 b 0. So, this is my a 2 b 0. So, a 2 b 0 and this it will give my O 3. So, 2 full adder 4 bit full adder we are using where the the LSP of the first adder with the carry from the previous term is fed as the LSP to the next full adder and the LSP of the multiplicand is the other term left that is the a 2 b 0. Now, similarly for the fourth term we see that carry coming from the third term plus a 0 b 3 a 1 b 2 a 2 b 1 we see that again this is my a 0 b 3 this is my a 0 b 3 and second term is this is my the the third one is is a 1 b 2. So, this is a 1 b 2 now a 0 b 3 and a 1 b 2 see this is a 0 b 3 and and a 0 b 3 and a 1 b 2 this these are added with the carry c 2. Now, they are feeding as the as the third one means they they are going here now this term this is my another term is left another term is a 0 b 3 1 b 2 is already considered another term is a 2 b 1 carry is also considered. So, here see now that a 2 b 1 the second term here this is my second one this is my second bit and here a 2 b 1 that is also second. So, for the next uh, 4 bit full adder that second it it the second bit it takes a summation of the second bit. So, this is one and this is another. So, it will be giving the O 3 and similarly the O 4 and O 5 they are also being generated. Now, mainly what we uh, want to show or we study from this circuit that we are actually designing a multiplier a 4 bit multiplicand a 3 bit multiplier. Now, just to do that thing we are using some some n gates some basic gates and 2 4 bit full adder. So, these 4 bit full adder we are defining as if these are my two basic building blocks or two pre design module that I am reusing here. So, these are these these are some fundamental circuits pull adder is a fundamental circuit I am using that thing in my uh, larger designs or complex designs. Now, so far we have seen that two two examples where we have used one simple uh, smaller circuits a 3 input XOR a 4 input XOR 
that can be treated as a uh, module and they are being used as the basic building block of the larger circuits. Then we have studied multiplier, if it is a smaller multi 2 bit multiplier, I can the my um, half adder can be a basic building block. If it is a 4 bit multiplier, my full adder circuit can be a basic building block. Now, there are many other fundamental circuits, decoder, multiplexer, encoder, demultiplexer. Now, one such example we see where the decoder can be used as a basic building block. And the example is or the design is the binary to gray coat converter. So, we want a circuit, the problem is we want a circuit where the input is binary and it will generate the output which is actually the gray coat means the it, it gray coat there is one property unique property is there that it, it generates a unit distance uh, it maintains a unit distance from to its previous one. So, just we see see here there is that means, I, I, I want better I draw, I want a design say this is a uh, black box whose inputs are A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D outputs will be W, X, Y, Z. So, as there are 4 inputs, I am giving 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 that 16 such combinations. Then for 0, 0, 0, 0, it is a again the output the 4 bit output w x y z are 0. Then that 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 again output is 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, see that here that distance is 1. Now, distance we define that number of places the, it it varies see here that it the previous one is all zero and the next one varies in the in one place only so here the distance is become distance is one similarly that when it is 0, 0, 1, 0, this becomes see that now the output changes the output becomes 0, 0, 1, 1 so that again it maintains a unit distance from the previous one. When it is 3 again this becomes 2 so that the it, it, it continues that property is maintained. So, th in this way we can generate that the see this is a 4 bit for gray coat generator. So, and if, if we observe the outputs w x y y z the patterns of w x y z we will be seeing that always that it, it maintains that property that always unit distance is maintained from the previous one. So, to between two consecutive patterns of w x y z always the distance becomes 1 that means the number of places it varies is 1. So, now I want to design this type of circuit. Now, if we there are 4 output lines w x y z, so the output expressions if we write it is will we'll be seeing that these are see for if we just see that uh, w, then w that w will be 1 for when a b c d values are 8, 9, 10, 11 up to 15. Similarly, x y z are there. So, we can write the output expressions that w becomes 1 when these mean terms exist 8 to 15. Similarly, x will be there 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, y will be 2, 3, 4, 5 and again 10, plus 10 11, 12, 13, z is 1, 2, 5, 6, 9, 10, 13, 14. Now, if we draw the Carnot map and as we know that we can reduce the expressions for the 4 outputs. So, 
So, the circuits will be like that. See, these are my W, X, Y, Z. These are my four, four outputs W, X, Y, Z. If we observe the inputs are 8 to 15, these are the decimal value we have written. and the A, B, C, D inputs are given then accordingly that these outputs will be generated which is fed to the that W, X, Y, Z generator. See here this is a decoder, this is a 4 to 4 to 16 that means 4 to 2 to the power 4 decoder that we are utilizing to design this type of circuits. So, when this ABCD values will be 8 to 15 means 1000 to all one then my w will be generated the, that it will be it will be fed to fed to the input of the w similarly when abcd value will be any one of this means 4 5 6 7 and 8 9 10 11 12 then it will be y will be generated and similarly x and z will be generated. So, here decoder is uh, used as the basic building block. So, in this way that larger complex circuits can be designed from the smaller modules. Okay, we end this lecture here, but we will continue this uh, for uh, another um, different other variety of uh, examples. Thank you. last lecture we have seen how the complex combinational circuits can be designed using fundamental circuits. These fundamental circuits uh, mean the we have considered uh, half adder, full adder, the decoder. Now, today we will read how the combinational circuits can be designed using another fundamental circuits called multiplexer. Now, already uh, we have read the functions of multiplexer, but again quickly.